Ah, the 1980s. They were the pinnacle for teen movies, and the driving force behind most of those were bullies that our heroes needed to overcome. Rather than avoiding difficulty through safe spaces, Gen X learned to overcome adversity one feathered hair douche after another, and it's the reason these movies and characters still resonate today. Let's take a look at my personal top 10 80s teen movie bullies. Let's set a few ground rules first. For starters, the bully needs to be a contemporary of the main characters. For instance, the assistant principals Ed Rooney from Ferris Bueller and Richard Vernon from Breakfast Club are clearly bullies, but they're adults, so they're out. Secondly, the bullies need to pose an actual threat or rise to the level of life-altering in some way. So for that reason, I didn't include Ian and Max from Weird Science. Oh, they were douches, but mostly just annoying and got put back in their place pretty quickly. They're out. And since we're talking weird science, I'd be remiss for not mentioning Chet, right? Played by Bill Paxton, Chet may be the epitome of 80s bully asshole, but he's an older brother, so not a contemporary. And while annoying as shit doesn't really play a huge role, so he didn't make the cut. So with that said, let's get started. Number 10, Johnny Lawrence, Karate Kid. Now I know what you're thinking, number 10? Are you kidding me? Nope. Long before Cobra Kai or the internet posts that got that started, I thought Johnny was wrongfully smeared. I mean, yeah, he was an over-aggressive asshole, but the entire situation and movie could have been avoided if Daniel had simply walked away when Johnny was trying to have a conversation with Allie. Everything that follows is a direct result. Oh, and nobody deserved a beating more than him for that Halloween dance stunt. No, ex-degenerate, man. 8 a.m. tomorrow, I'm a senior. I've got one year to make it all work. And that's what I'm gonna do. Make it work. All of it, right? <laughs> that's right, man. Number nine, Troy Perkins, The Goonies. Troy's a paint-by-numbers douche. Rich, athlete, has the girl and disrespects her and is at the center of the plot which involves buying up the town to tear it all down. Had he played a bigger role, he'd be higher up on this list, but with so few lines, he comes in the bottom half. Andy! You goody! Number eight, Roy Stalin, Better Off Dead. Dude's last name is Stalin. Yeah, of course he's an asshole. He's the star skier that cheats and keeps our hero off the team, steals his girlfriend, and generally makes life miserable. The guy so thoroughly ruins Lane's life that the entire movie revolves around his desire to kill himself, hence the name of the movie. But he's not used enough to be higher on the list. Plus, word is that Billy Zabka was originally going to play this role, which is just amazing to think about. Buenos dias. Looking really good today, buddy. Looking real good. Number seven, Tommy, Valley Girl. Valley Girl remains an underrated classic from the era. Harder edge than most of the John Hughes stuff, and you can see it in Tommy. Sure, he's got all the normal stuff, but he's also super manipulative. Not only is he physically aggressive and has the prerequisite gang around him at all times, but the way he plays Julie and her friends is great. He makes a solid antagonist for Nick Cage's Randy. Oh, bitchin', is this in 3D? No, but your face is. I'm like, I hate 3D. Number six, Heather Chandler, Heathers. Hey, look, everybody, diversity. Heather would have easily landed in my top five had she not been ushered out of the movie so quickly. She's also a perfect example of how men and women aren't the same, and the things that make an awful male and a bully are usually completely different, but just as devastating when it's a female. Her strength comes from her sexuality and her understanding of how the social structure of high school works, and she plays it all like a fiddle. She is wonderfully awful. If you're gonna openly be a bitch, it's just Heather, why can't we talk to different kinds of people? Fuck me gently with the chainsaw. Do I look like Mother Teresa? If I did, I probably wouldn't mind talking to the geek squad. Number five, Biff Tannen, Back to the Future. Biff's got it all. He's big, mean, cool car, has a crew with him at all times, and is not above sexual assault. And while he technically is a bully from the 50s, our hero is from the 80s, so I'll allow it. I'd rank him higher, but this is where my personal biases kick in a bit. I've always been a big guy, so tough guy bullies didn't tend to move the needle for me. 
as you'll see further, the ones that got under my skin were the ones that were more emotionally scarring. But Biff's definitely an all-timer and well deserves his spot in the top five. Until Monday. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think but fly. Think. I gotta have time to recopy. Number four, Stan Gable, Revenge of the Nerds. While obviously not a high school movie, I let this one slide because our heroes are mostly freshmen in college and because Ted McGinley's Stan is just such a fantastic douchebag. Good looking, athlete, popular, head of not just the coolest fraternity, but the president of the entire Greek council, dating the head cheerleader, and McGinley plays him to perfection as a belittling, sneering jerk. And as with all these guys, you can't wait for him to get what's coming to him. Just a legendary asshole right here. Well, gentlemen, as president of the Greek Council, I'm sorry to inform you that your membership has been denied. Number three, Greg Tolan, just one of the guys. Now, many will argue that Johnny Lawrence is the bigger bully, and maybe Chaz in Back to School was the bigger douche, but Greg literally wears fingerless weightlifting gloves the whole movie and works out by doing curls with helpless victims. He steals food off of lunch trays when he's not knocking tables over for fun. And in true bully fashion, he's so up his own ass that he has no clue that one of the guys he's picking on for months is this girl right here. Nah, despite it being said that Billy Zabka is one of the nicest guys in Hollywood, this is the Mount Everest of his douchebag roles of the 80s. It is perfection. Who invited you? Just what we need, another pussy. <laughs> <laughs> another good exercise for upper body strength. The pussy toss for distance. Hey, get off me! Get off me! On to my top two. Like I said earlier, tough guy bullies usually didn't do it for me. Mine were the ones that made you feel awful for who you were, whether it was looks or social status or money. Something about those barbs seemed to sting the most and stick with you longer, which is why my top two looks like this. Number two, Hardy Jen's Some Kind of Wonderful. This fucking guy here. Holy hell. Craig Sheffer manages to walk around this entire movie with the most punchable face in screen history. If you were to look up shit-eating grin in the dictionary, you get this face right here. He's got everything. The hottest girl, the money, the clothes, the look, the car, and none of it's enough. He treats his girlfriend like shit because she, like our protagonist, is from the poor side of town and he knows she's with him to get out of that, so she'll do anything he wants. Likewise, he's got Keith's number and knows exactly what bothers him and what cuts to the core. And while Keith's motivation is to get the girl, what he's really trying to do is be like Hardy and just not an asshole. This is such an underrated classic of the time and much of it is driven by a fantastically awful bully. She's deceptively innocent, isn't she? Clean, nice on the outside. Did she do you? The one thing that um, I'm glad about is that you get her used. And at number one, Steph McKee, Pretty in Pink. This was a toss up for me between Steph and Hardy, as they are so similar. He's got the hottest girls, all the money, the coolest clothes, walks around with the biggest couldn't give a shit about anything look on his face the whole movie. But Steph is worse in that with Hardy, you could see him trying. He was working at being that guy and had the ability to pull back when challenged. Steph doesn't have that gear. He's an effete asshole, not just to Andy and Ducky, but even to his supposed best friend Blaine. He's a high schooler laying around drinking whiskey out of highball glasses, rolling cigarettes at his dad's desk in the lounge, wearing Don Johnson flowy white suits to school where he stands openly in hallways smoking. He dominates you by looking through you because he doesn't care if you exist. <laughs> yeah, for me, he's the clear number one. You're a bitch. So who's on your list and in what order? Let me know in the comments section what you think. I'm eager to read yours. Until next time, thanks for watching.